By changing levels of oxytocin, you can change sociality and how individuals interact with others. I'm Pat Churchland. Uh, my home institution is the University of California in San Diego. My work is sometimes described as neurophilosophy, and that's because it's at the interface of traditional questions in philosophy, such as what's the nature of consciousness, what's the nature of knowledge, and on the other hand, with neuroscience that is beginning to reveal something about the organization and the function of the physical brain that will help us answer those traditional philosophical questions. One of the questions that I've long been interested in has to do with the nature of decision making and what can we learn from the brain about how decisions are actually made. The most general question has to do with whether or not there are causal antecedents for the decisions that we make. And on that, it looks pretty clearly as though there are, which means that when we make a decision, there is a confluence of a whole lot of different events that go into making that decision. Some of them are conscious, some of them are non-conscious, some of them have to do with knowledge, some of them have to do with emotion. The other question that I'm very interested in, and the question I'm working on right now, has to do with the neurobiological basis or the neurobiological platform for moral behavior. What is it about our brain that makes us social? What is it about the mammalian brain that makes us not just care for ourselves and see to our own welfare, but to care for our offspring and to care for mates, for affiliates, kin, friends, and sometimes for strangers? And we're learning quite a lot about the chemicals that regulate those kinds of responses. So we know a piece or two of the story, and more will come into focus as the research proceeds. Well, I think one of the most interesting things about our social nature is that it appears to be mediated by several really very simple peptides, namely oxytocin and vasopressin. And of course, those are embedded within a vast network, a network involving the endogenous opiates, involving circuitry that relates brainstem structures to cortical structures and so forth. But it looks like the hub of the network is oxytocin. And that turns out to be a really important discovery because by changing levels of oxytocin, you can change sociality and how individuals interact with others. It's hard to know what kind of applications are going to come out of these discoveries, and that's partly because although oxytocin is at the hub of this network, it's an extraordinarily complicated network. But having said that, I think one place where there may actually be a significant intervention will have to do with auto autism spectrum disorder. Now that's a very complicated disorder and I know that people in Queen Square have put a huge and very rewarding effort into studying autism. Um, but it may also be that there is a story not just at the genetic level but at the level of the circuitry and how oxytocin figures in that circuitry. So it's conceivable, but this is just speculation, it's conceivable that something, some role for oxytocin might be found in order to ameliorate some of these symptoms.